Welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining me today on this new episode of the Place Tech podcast. My name is Blondine Lafar, corporate journalist, and I'll be your host today for this in depth journey into European innovation and prop tech. Well, you know, it's been quite a while now that uh, innovation has established itself as the new mantra for real estate companies. But what lies beneath the buzzword and the hype? Is innovation that easy and rewarding? What's the true story behind the shiny concept? We'll ask all those questions and many more to Philippe Boyer, who is the head of uh, innovation and corporate affairs at Covivio, the French property development company. Thank you very much for joining us today, Philippe. How are you? Hi, Blaine. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> thank you uh, for being here, Philippe. Uh, maybe as a starter, we can look back in time because uh, you were appointed head of innovation uh, in 2016. Um, can you tell us what was the mood back then? Was uh, the perception on innovation the same as today? Well, answering your question is just about the same thing as watching, uh, you know, the famous movie Back to the Future, uh, <laughs> trying to, to remember the past. Uh, at that time in 2015 and 16. I would say that three main keywords were very often pronounced uh, prop tech, technology, as well as new ways of working. Um, if we start with the third one, new ways of working, I guess all your listeners will sure remember at that time everyone was chatting about WeWork. WeWork mm -hmm. will smash commercial real estate, uh, WeWork will, we will disrupt the, the way people work, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Everyone, in a way, was petrified to be disrupted by WeWork. In a way, WeWork's expansion has been a very good news for traditional, uh, I would say, uh, corporate real estate actors. Um, according to me, it forced uh, corporate real estate companies to move on, to go further, developing new mm. offers as well uh, as new services. At Covidio, back in 2016, we started to think about our new co-working offer. We launched uh, two years after, Wellio. And more than ever, and especially post-pandemic time, a new ways of working topic is still more than, than ever very accurate. Also, uh, back in uh, 2016, the other words uh, was PropTech. At that time, I remember very well in, in 2015, 16, uh, everything or just about everything was seen through PropTech glasses. In fact, PropTech is part of the answer, but not always the whole answer. Even if we, I must admit that these newcomers have helped a lot uh, commercial real estate to change, and that's also a good news. And the last mm -hmm. words I was mentioning was technology. Again, in 2015, tech was everything. It's funny because a year before, I remember very well, in 2000, 2014, an American philosopher uh, called Evgeny Morozov published a book called To Save Everything, Click Here. The idea of this book was to focus on the fact many people think tech has superpowers and can do just about everything. What is true is that corporate real estate, digital technologies helped a lot, collect data to make things easier to connect and control things into building. But back in 2015, many of us thought technology was the ultimate graal. The truth is that tech is central, but cannot solve all the problems when it comes to innovation. Mm, that's interesting because that's, I think, the mood that we are living today, like questioning technology and, and sometimes speaking of low tech, but we'll get back to it mm. afterwards. Um, Philippe, when you started uh, on this mandate, I guess um, you had to establish both long-term projects, but also adjusting, changing gear, testing and learning. How did you survive this paradox at Covivio? Mm. Well, uh, answering your question is going back to the, uh, I would say, the origins and definitions of the word innovation. Innovation is something to is implementing new ideas through products or services. Whereas, and in cooperation, creativity is the ability to invent and produce new ideas. So when you innovate, you have to try, you have to test, you have to learn. Testing, learning, changing gear, as you said, is part of all companies trying to implement new ways of ruling their businesses. At Covidio, things are very clear when it comes to innovation. We are very pragmatic and we think mm. that innovation should first serve the way we do our businesses. As long as we spot new actors, new solutions that uh, might help to improve ways we serve our clients or fit into our main priorities, 
which are sustainability and newer services and digitalization, we are more than ready to test. That's why today in our three main countries uh, where Covidio is located, France, Germany, and Italy, we're working with just about 50 uh, prop techs ranging from air quality to mobility or fooding. Each time we test, we evaluate and see if it brings real value to our three main business, business line uh, with our offices, hospitality and residential. You mentioned value, of course, because it's really core to, uh, to the business, but how do you measure it? How do you make sure that it actually brings value? Well, value, you're right, is both crucial and quite easy to spot answering this very simple question. What a new product or new services might bring to Covivio's activity, whether for property management, sustainability, building digitalization, or introducing new services for our clients. Uh, just let me give you two examples to illustrate what I'm saying. Mm. For more than a year and a half, we are now experiencing sensors measuring air quality inside our office buildings. We're working with, French, with a French prop tech called the Octopus Lab, uh, Lab, and we first started with two buildings as we wanted first to measure what this prop tech system really brings to us. Now we, are, we have enlarged this implementation as 10 buildings are currently equipped and operated with sensors me measuring all kinds of air quality indicators. Um, it really brings value to us as we can communicate uh, to our clients, stating that we do our best to improve well-being conditions. Um, I don't know yet if this, experiment, if this experimentation has came beyond our expectation, but what I know is that it perfectly answers the pain point we had, especially in a time when post-pandemic well-being inside building is a keyword. Mm -hmm. It improves comfort and reassures our clients. Another example with another prop tech called Witco, implementing a tenant app, whether for Covizio or for Wellio sites. We've been working with Witco for more than four years, developing a specific app to our tenants that use once they are in, inside our buildings. Here, the value is real. Besides the fact everyone knows managing tenant spaces, it is now a key thing for any corporate uh, commercial real estate company. I just remind our listeners that Will You is your offer on pro working. Exactly. Uh, of, yeah, yeah, just uh, uh, to specify, are there use cases that maybe did not bring the expected value or are still in pilot phase and where you will still well, be disappointed? Uh, we, well, as, as, I, as I said, we tried several solutions, several techniques, uh, several products, several services, uh, and uh, the keywords for, for us at Covivio is, first of all, to try and to see once again if it brings value. If it brings value, the thing is to duplicate, to, you know, I would say, to industrialize the solution to, uh, uh, to our buildings. Um, you said that back in time, the keywords were prop tech, technology. Mm. Now it seems that the move is towards sustainability. Uh, there are more and more climate tech companies. Uh, did you see the focuses change over time? Well, more and more, what is what is sure is uh, what you mentioned: uh, sustainability, uh, tech services, etc. I'm pretty sure these these main focuses you mentioned for Covizio will stay as key drivers for the coming years for all commercial real estate uh, actors. Uh, first, uh, no need to mention that sustainability is a great cause uh, all uh, commercial real estate uh, company cope with, has to cope with. Uh, Covivio is one of the best real estate companies in the world for our sustainable perf performances. But we know we have to be more innovative when it comes to climate change or biodiversity. Technologies which target um, at measuring environmental footprints are already going strong because they really enable companies such as Covivio to operate our building at a more granular level up to individual needs to the occupants. The second thing you mentioned about tech services, uh, through sensors, data, algorithm, artificial intelligence, we are now aware uh, of many uh, new indicators provided thanks to these technologies. For instance, the amount of air quality, as we're mentioning, but also energy consumption as well as the way people occupy spaces. So these are the, the very uh, practical, pragmatic answers uh, we have now, uh, we have explored over, over the last year at Covivio, and we are now ready to, to implement on a more larger scale. 
You mentioned data. Uh, back in 2016, everyone was talking about mm. data, putting sensors everywhere. Now companies feel a bit overwhelmed with data. Uh, is this something you experience also at Covivio? Uh, is it um, challenging to handle all this data? Um, building data uh, are now everywhere. That's a fact. Uh, thanks to sensors, uh, connected buildings, management system, uh, commercial real estate companies, the uh, world is invaded by data. Uh, the very strategic question is, first of all, how to uh, properly store this data? And secondly, what to do with this data? These are the two main questions all companies have to face to. At Covio, um, we are answering, um, answering those two questions. First, uh, implementing a, a data lake, which is a place uh, all building data are located and we go further as we're also uh, implementing a, a boss experimentation uh, in the in the tower Silex 2 in Lyon, um, which is a pretty big building, which is 30,000 square meter. We will soon implement a, a building operating system, the boss, what I was mentioning, mm -hmm. which is which is a software platform that makes the link between the equipment of a building and the application that will be used by building managers and building occupants through this experimentation. We want to check how to better handle data and how can data help uh, manage a, a, in a more, would say, accurate uh, way uh, building. Um, that, that, that's interesting because now it seems that we're talking about smart data and, and less about uh, big data. But um, the, the, the big buzzword that we keep hearing now in 2022 is, is the metaverse, of course. Mm, sure. uh, that's the big trend today. Mm. Uh, what's your feeling about it? Are you uh, like um, a bit suspicious? Are you interested? Do you see a business perspective for Covivio? What is obvious is that the term uh, metaverse is a real buzzword, not only in tech, but also in business, that's for sure. Um, trying to sum up things as I uh, understood them, uh, to my knowledge, uh, metaverse promise, pr promise it might allow people to interact in a more uh, immersive way than a traditional website. So in the simplest term, what I understand as a metaverse um, is, I would say, is 100% um, uh, virtual reality uh, world generated by computers. And now, trying to answer your specific question about how metaverse can fit with real estate, the answer, uh, I'm sorry to, to say so, but the answer so far is not easy as it's still a blurring concept. Uh, what I see today is that there are still more questions than answers. Uh, for instance, uh, what will be the value of a real, est a real estate digital uh, uh, asset? Uh, I don't know. I don't know the answer. Other question, will clients prefer when they organize meetings in the metaverse than in the real world? That's a question uh, corporate real estate uh, companies should ask themselves because it will have, a, I guess, a, it might have a, a real consequence. Personally, I don't believe this assertion. Another question, will land scarcity um, always be the norm? Today, if you go on the sandbox platform, for instance, you can buy uh, all, uh, you, you can't buy all plots you want. Uh, how about How about if one day sandbox platform or decentralized platform, that's one, failed? You see, there are still a lot of uh, questions to be answered to before the metaverse, I guess, so emerge as a new competitor. So no test and learn for the moment uh, on the metaverse? We have tried, uh, to tell you the truth, we, are, we have tried, uh, we have made an experimentation with a headset on, uh, trying to, to be immersed in a, in a virtual meeting room. Uh, we wanted to, to, to try just to, to know yeah. what we're talking about. But for the moment, uh, we are also experimenting another other other things I can't uh, say right now. But obviously, we we're looking for, uh, we we're just watching the metaverse uh, very closely anyway. So wait and see. Um, <laughs> thank you, Philippe. Um, back to Covivio and your innovation roadmap. Uh, Covivio is active in the three fields of uh, real estate, uh, offices, hospitality and housing. Uh, when it comes to innovation, was there a, a focus on one dedicated field? What is sure is that the COVID-19 pandemic has reshaped uh, expectations and practices in the long run, as well as relationships between building owners and tenants. To answer your question, we put a lot on energy designing our assets, uh, whether offices, hotels, or and residential, in order this building to fit perfectly tenants' need. 
uh, if we zoom on offices, many things have changed over the, over the two or three years, especially clients' demand. They want now uh, flexible spaces, uh, LC working environments, uh, new services uh, as the office to become a kind of a place to be where people can cooperate, can co-innovate, why not have fun or, or pleasure. All these new dimensions, dimension have to be um, designed long before an office building is delivered. So what Covigio, uh, at Covigio, we have accelerated over several topics. First, through the developments of our values uh, offer, you, you were mentioning our co-working offer, which is our flexible offer. Second, through the way we design our office building, focusing on, on client centricity or creating an in-house design thinking uh, policy. At Covizio, we are also very lucky as we can implement, I would say, cross-fertilization projects thanks to the fact, as you said, that we also own uh, hotels, resi, and offices, and we can bring uh, elements, materials from uh, hotels to the office building and, and to understand and to imagine new solutions. Does it mean that now innovation is, is more directed towards the customer, towards design, towards the user experience. Would you say that? Or more and more, especially it was before the pandemic. But uh, once uh, once again, the pandemic has uh, has accelerated the the the, the, the trend. Uh, now, uh, once again, the clients uh, want things uh, to have changed uh, more regularly, uh, more flexible spaces. They want new solutions. They want to be sure when they come back to the office that uh, the uh, the well being uh, and condition in the building are are just perfect. So. Uh, that's a, once again, that's, that's a good sign, and, and it makes uh, the uh, the uh, real estate industry uh, evolve uh, very quickly. And how do you make sure you remain close to the market? Are you working with partners? Are you working with uh, internal teams? Uh, what's your organization? Well, organization, as you as you say, is crucial, especially in a time where people's needs evolve really fast, as we're just talking about. At Covivio, um, over the past uh, last years, so we have pushed very hard in favor of client centricity, uh, launching, for instance, a European satisfaction survey program on the French and Italian perimeter regarding Covivio as, as well as Wellio. Same thing for our RESI activity in Germany, as we are very honored uh, to be regularly awarded to top marks in corresponding customer survey, including a, a very well-known annual survey called the Ferris Landlord. Uh, whether for officers or resi, uh, asking what our clients want or expect is the best way to, to, to adapt our services and offering. But asking our clients might not, I guess, be enough as we might also, uh, uh, also rely on, on our innovation ecosystem, whether our clients or startups we work with, to change or find out new ideas we might test. To do so, uh, that also requires us to both carry a lot of uh, R&D as well as explain a lot. We do that through inside publication as well as innovation meetings. And also internally at Covivio, it's also very important to share best practices, especially when it comes to innovation. On the European scale, besides a monthly innovation meeting in order to encourage innovation, culture and share innovation uh, pillars, we also organize several types of meeting once again, to, to share uh, what innovation bring to our uh, offers and, and products. You mentioned the 50 prop techs you were working with, but do you also have uh, uh, internal teams working in each business unit, or is it a, a centralized pool? No, innovation at Covivio is very decentralized. Uh, once again, I, I, I don't think uh, innovation should be centralized to a unique, uh, I would say, uh, gate. Um, everyone uh, can innovate, everyone can bring new ideas, Every, everyone is seeing, is reading, is watching uh, all tons of information. So uh, what we need is to have a kind of a corporate um, innovation culture in order for everyone to, uh, to be a, in, in a, a potential innovator. Speaking of startups, well, you know, sometimes the feedback and experiences were not uh, that great uh, because the, the, the cultures of startups did not fit within big corporates. Uh, how did it go at Covivio? Did you have the same feedback? Well, I wouldn't say working with PropTex is something uh, beyond our, our, our expectation. Once again, we were currently working with just about 50 uh, PropTex in, in various fields. So it's, it seems very, very, it is very important to us. But um, first of all, um, we have 
uh, to be aware that working with PropTex doesn't answer the same, I would say, criteria as working with another corporate. Uh, the time frame, the agility, the KPIs, all these indicators should be uh, evaluated very closely when working with PropTex. Uh, second element important to me is that the fact, uh, and we've already said that, but that PropTex are pushing corporate or real estate companies, uh, very uh, actors to, to move forward, which is a very good, uh, very good thing. And thirdly, in this post-pandemic time where everything is moving very fast, where expectations are shifting, uh, we have to stay on alert as newcomers, new technologies can disrupt or change our industry. So just to sum up things, it is very important to work with PropTex, even if the, uh, the indicators should be very well uh, defined before starting a, a corporation. You also mentioned that you work project by project on individual needs. How, since you're a group on a European level, how do you ensure uh, scalability, industrialization? Is it your, your biggest challenge? Well, everything starts with uh, the fact that we, we need to, um, to share information because uh, we are, Covio is located in, in three main uh, countries, in Germany, in France, and Italy, as I said. And uh, when it comes to, to innovation, everyone is in, uh, uh, is in ability to, to, to innovate in his in own country. We are a very uh, decentralized uh, company. And it's, especially when it comes to innovation, it's very important that everyone can, can do so in his, in his own country. But at the end of the day, what is important is to share information, is to, to, to share whether it's uh, what we have tried has succeeded, has succeeded or not, and why not. And when, once again, uh, the, the fact that uh, um, information regarding innovation uh, to be shared all, all, all um, in, in the company is, is very important just to, to make everyone progress. Yeah, and I guess this sharing also participated in the change management, the change of culture. What was the response that you got at Covivio? Were you backed um, by, by the board? Was there a push towards innovation in your teams? Um, innovation alone, uh, one only by itself, as I said, is, as I guess you understood that is a nonsense. Uh, innovation uh, should be, uh, should be uh, shared uh, at all levels of the company and especially at, uh, coming, from, coming from the board. Uh, is it something uh, very important uh, to, to, once again, to, 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 to mention? Uh, I wouldn't imagine an innovation policy uh, inside a company, uh, whatever the size of the company, if it's not supported by by the, the, the board, because everything starts from, from the board, even if, as I said, everyone can be a potential uh, innovator. But uh, um, what is also very important is that innovation in, in, a, in a company uh, should be encouraged and uh, all the tools should be deployed in order for everyone to understand that what he will propose, what will what he'll be experiencing, will be supported, will be uh, followed by the general management. Everyone can be an innovator, I guess. That's the, mm. the key sentence here. <laughs> um, thank you very much, Philippe. Um, thank you for uh, sharing so much uh, with uh, our audience. So you're head of corporate affairs and innovation uh, at uh, Covivio. Um, I guess uh, our audience will get plenty of takeaways and many approaches to, to explore on innovation. So thanks for sharing with us. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.